A few years ago, I started thinking about you know, issues with climate change and energy security in the United States and you know, what can an RNA biochemist do to, to contribute to biofuel production. You know, I live in Berkeley and so we drive one car, it's a Prius, you know, we have solar panels on our house and we have a garden, but I wanted to see if I could do something with my science. So plant biomass is uh, considered to be a great renewable resource, but it's very hard to get the sugars out of the plant cell wall that could then be made into a biofuel. Really in this group we work on two organisms. One is this fungus in nature, Neurospor crassa. It is found growing on the sides of burnt plant matter. So it's first breaking plant cell walls down into its constituent parts, and then it's consuming those constituent parts to make more of itself. The other is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a yeast that can make fuel. So there are still some deficiencies in these yeast strains that don't allow them to make fuel as well or as rapidly as we want. It's our philosophy that if we can understand how fungi break down plant material, we can then engineer those same traits into a process or an organism that we want to use for making biofuels. been involved with the Energy Biosciences Institute since it started. The idea behind it was to try to understand what it would take to make a sustainable biofuel. We just took Neurospora, started growing it on plant material, and just looked to see what genes, what part of its DNA code was, was turned on, what's turned off, sort of a global view of what Neurospora was doing. But we wanted to take components from this organism, Neurospora and put them into yeast. Our primary target was actually a, a transporter. What these transporters do is they exist on the outside of cells and they essentially act as gates to allow sugars into the cell. And so he took those and put them into the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the one that we use to make beer, and um, used that organism to try to figure out what these, what these genes were doing. What was special about these transporters that we found was that they allow import of a sugar that normally can't get into yeast. and ferment both of those to ethanol at the same time. So the two most prevalent sugars in plant cell walls were now able to be co-fermented. When we started looking at Neurospor, we had no preconceived notion about what we would learn. It became clear pretty quickly that, oh, this could actually have a practical application in addition to the basic science understanding. You know, the idea of renewable energy is a really pressing issue. As, as an academic, we don't really have necessarily the whole picture on what the problems are. We're messing around with small tubes of, you know, buffered water with salt most of the time, or, you know, growing organisms on a very small scale, um, trying to understand how that fits into something that has to be on a very large scale. Um, it's really good to have interactions, you know, we meet other faculty and also people from industry who, who are really the ones who are going to have to deal with this. It has been nice and exciting as a scientist to see something at least take the first step, which is to go from just an idea um, in a journal towards, in the end, a product that is going to be competitive in a marketplace. Mm -hmm.